Hello everyone and welcome to Physical Science. We are in Unit 7, Section 2. We're going to talk about friction and force diagrams. So let's talk about friction first. You kind of know what friction is already, I hope, but let's get some actual um, types and examples in. So right, friction, this is a force that opposes the motion of an object due to contact with another object or surface. So friction is opposing, it is an opposite direction of motion. So it's something that is pushing against it. Um, so friction is going to be surface contact. Yes, I'm rubbing my hands together right now. Surface contact causing a resistance. So for instance, if you rub your hands back and forth, the friction is opposing your forward motion. Um, there are four types of friction and we are going to get in some the four types and some examples. All right, so first one I want you to write is number one, static. Static friction. Um, this is friction that acts on objects not moving. So right now, if you are sitting in a chair, you have static friction um, occurring between your butt and that chair. It is friction that acts on objects not moving. Um, so each step you take, there is a friction between your foot and the ground or by you sitting there. So um, friction between the ground and your foot only if you are standing static, not moving. So this is kind of confusing, so just kind of ignore this. But um, friction between the ground and your foot or your butt and the chair. The second type of friction, bloop, bloop, is sliding and it's exactly what it says. Um, so it is a force that opposes um, as it slides across a surface. So if you were to stand on the floor and slide your feet across the floor, I'm doing that right now, I know you can't see me, but I am. If you slide uh, your feet across the floor, the friction that is opposing you sliding is going to be um, a sliding friction. Or if you slide a cup down a table, anything that is sliding across a surface is going to have sliding friction. The third type is rolling. Um, and that's pretty straightforward too. This is a force that opposes the direction of a motion as it rolls. So force that opposes as it rolls across a surface. So this is going to be a lot less than sliding because there's not as much surface contact at a time. Um, that's why if you took a skateboard and rolled it on have, dealing with rolling friction, it would have less friction than if you took the wheels off that skateboard and then just tried to slide the deck. That would, I mean, I guess you'd do that, but then you have to grease the, anyways. So a skateboard or the wheels on a skateboard would be a rolling friction. Um, if you were to take that skateboard and then um, take some wax and then try to um, slide the skateboard down something, that would be sliding friction. So rolling would only be if the wheels. By the way, I skateboard badly. And uh, yeah, you should check it out sometime. You should skateboard, just don't hurt yourself. The fourth type is fluid. Fluid is like if you were swimming or if you are currently walking through a, a room, I don't know why you're walking through a room while taking notes, you should probably not multitask, but um, it is a force that opposes the direction of a motion as it moves through a fluid. And most people don't think of air as a fluid, but it is, um, water or air. Um, this friction will increase as your speed increases. So you may not feel air, um, fluid resistance of the air while you are walking around, but I guarantee that if your acceleration were great enough, like if you stick your hand out of the window of a car, you start feeling the fluid resistance, the fluid friction, so air resistance, or water. So those are our four different types of friction. Okay, when we're trying to figure out what's going on with an object, we use something called force diagrams. Um, and here's some examples of some force diagrams. We'll draw some on our own in a second, but just follow along with me. So you got a cube. Um, the cube is being pushed across a surface. So this is the direction of the motion. There is going to be an opposite frictional force. This, this one is going to be sliding friction. 
and it's sliding because you are just sliding it across. So friction will always be in the direct opposite of the motion, the intended force. So here we have something just sitting. If you have something that is just sitting, you're still experiencing forces even though you don't know you are. You have the force of gravity pulling you down. You have the normal force that is keeping you from going further into the ground. So it's the force that opposes gravity. And then you have a frictional, so if you have a force applied this way, your frictional for force would be in the opposite direction. But if all of these are equal, do you see how this line and this line are of equal length and this line and this line are of equal length? If your friction is the same as your applied force, you're not going to move it. It's kind of like if I were to take a heavy desk and I'm putting force into it. If the friction is equal to or greater than my applied force, that thing is not going to move. This one over here, though, you can see the pushing force is greater. That line is longer than the opposing frictional force, so this would be sliding. This one would not be moving. Now, this lady right here she, with the high-waisted pants, um, she is pushing on a, um, a block. So her force is going forward. She's applying a force to the block. Her static or frictional force would be in the opposite direction. You ever notice if you push something really, really heavy that you start sliding backwards? That's because the force that you are pushing with is greater than your static or, or yeah, than your static force. So you start sliding and then you have a st sliding frictional force. Now this guy, he is pushing this way and the friction is going in direct opposite opposition again. So his force, friction will always be in opposition. So let's look at a force diagram. If you'll please go ahead and draw a square. All force diagrams we're gonna represent with squares. So when you have something that is not moving, um, this is pretty much what's going to be happening. Uh, actually, this one is not, this one is moving a little bit. Well, we'll I'll show you. So your force normal, draw an arrow going up and write force normal. That is the force pushing away from the ground. So you have a force pulling you ground down and then you have a force pushing from the ground back up on you. So this is your force of gravity. Draw the arrows so that they are equal. If your arrows are equal, if your force normal pushing against the ground is the same thing as your force of gravity, which is pulling you down, um, you are not going to be going up or down. So in this case, you have a frictional force, a force friction going this way. Notice it's a shorter arrow, and this arrow is the force applied, and it is going that way. Do you see that this specific arrow is longer than this one? So which force is greater? Well, the longer arrow, so the force applied. So this force diagram is showing that this object would be sliding this way because the force applied is greater than the frictional force. So our second example, draw a square again and draw a an long arrow going up and a shorter arrow going down. So they may give you numbers. So write F equals 12,000 newtons versus the force of gravity equals 800 newtons. Which one is greater? Well, 1,200 is greater than 800, so is the object going to be moving up or down? Well, if the force is greater going up, then it will be moving up. So overall, this object would be moving up. All right, next example. Draw in a square, a short arrow going up of force equals 600 newtons, a longer arrow going down, the force of gravity equals 800 newtons. Which one is greater? Well, even the arrow shows you that 800 is greater than 600. So is it going to be moving up or moving down? Overall, this object would be moving down or falling. All right, let's look at this one. Draw a square, draw an arrow going up for force normal, and an arrow going down for force of gravity. Is either one greater than the other? Does the arrow look the same? Yes. So is it moving? No. This would be no motion. It is not moving up or down. Is there a force being applied? Yes, but the forces in both directions are equal, so it's not going to move. Again, it's like me pushing against a desk, a heavy desk, and me not moving and the desk not moving. Then our forces are equal. All right, next one. What if we've got this going on? What if we have a force normal, 
force equals 50 newtons, force of gravity equals 50 newtons, and then we have a force to the left hand side of 20 newtons. Where is this object moving? Is it moving up, down, right, or left? It would be moving towards the left because the force going this way is 20 newtons. Is there any force going this way? Nope. So this would be the greater force. So it's going to go this way. It'll move to the left. Will it go up and down? No, because these two are equal. So there's forces being applied. It's just that they're equal, so they're not going to move. It's kind of like a game of tug of war. So let's draw one from scratch. A book sitting on a desk, right? A book sitting on a desk. I don't care that you can draw a book or a desk. We're going to use squares because that's what force diagrams are. So I have to think, if it's not moving, what's happening? Well, my force, of, everything always has to deal with the force of gravity. And is my normal force going to be the same or is it going to be different if it's not moving? It will be the same. So my force normal will be the same. Do I need to draw any forces moving left or right if the book is just sitting on the desk? No, um, because there are no forces being applied left or right. All right, so the second one, an object slides to the right on a desk. Draw a force diagram, boop, 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 got a little square. So if it is moving to the right, well, we still have the force of gravity pulling down because you always do, and it said, didn't say it, it's moving up or down. So if it's not moving up or down, the force normal has to be the same. And it says it's moving to the right on a desk. So my force over here would have to be greater than the force over here. I could also draw this like this. So I could still have a force pulling this way. It just means that the force going to the right has to be greater to the, than the force going to the left. So this is an object going, and you would have a force going to the left. This would be friction, and this would be your force applied, because we know that there is never a frictionless system. So um, you would have friction working against it. It would just be less than the force applied. All right, everybody. I hope you understand friction, and force diagrams. Have a wonderful day.